previously on completing my Monster High collection. There's over 800 Monster High dolls to collect, only missing 100 of them. It's my opportunity to finally meet with Mattel. I'm going to Comic Con! Oh, The Comic-Con trip was really the end of Alex and I's relationship. So I'm selling my out-of-box Monster High dolls on Whatnot. Literally have to go into an event. Can we please? Oh my God. <laughs> Why I did you put I know. I was <laughs> Another important thing to me that I couldn't be present for because my head was somewhere else. Hello, Claudia and I here. Y'all have been waiting forever for part three, and of course, we wanted to make sure it was extra special for you all. <laughs> so now it's here. There's so many questions that y'all have asked me over the past couple months of this documentary, and it means so much that it's meant so much to so many of you, and then I finally get to share part three with all of you. It's just been a lot. Now that the events are finally slowing down, I've had time to rest, but now I'm dealing with a lot of the emotional grief and that is pretty exhausting. <laughs> I would give you a hug, but you know, you're carrying quite a bit. After the boxes? <laughs> I love Nicole. She is a queen. So if you don't already know, Nicole is the OG Claudine cosplayer. I remember seeing Nicole when I was 10 years old on the Monster High Facebook page because she would always go to Comic-Con with her custom Claudine outfits. She is like a huge part of Monster High's history, a true icon, if you will. Your jacket's cute, where's that from? She took a little trip over to me because she gave me a ring and knew that I was trying to complete my Monster High collection. And she had a ton of dolls in storage that she was trying to get rid of because she wanted to pay her rent. You know, we all have bills to pay and I'm always down to help a sister out. So I was like, maybe there's a couple dolls that I don't necessarily need, but it might be an extra addition or I could give away in my whatnot live stream. Bring them on over. Oh, did you have that poster for me? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I, I left it out. Oh, no problem. Oh, cute. Yes. This is going up in the bathroom. Nicole is probably as obsessed with Monster High as I am. I don't know somebody as obsessed with Monster High in the way that Nicole is because she has the most beautiful Monster High themed bathroom. She's just such a true, genuine fan of Monster High. Oh my God, these are so much lighter than I expected. I've never found this in store. You know what? I found it at Kmart. I was going to say this was Kmart, huh? A lot of people probably wouldn't know this if you're a newer Monster High fan, but Kmart used to have a ton of exclusive dolls. So Kmart would request from Mattel as a buyer if they could make specific dolls exclusive to Kmart. If you are an OG Monster High collector, then you know that the Kmart dolls became super expensive because they were so hard to find because if you didn't live near a Kmart, then you couldn't get them. No, they just basically been sitting in storage since the day I got them. I feel that. Yeah, I have a couple dolls like that myself. So I have a secret and Elvira's gonna kill me, but Nicole brought me a Sweet 1600 Draculaura, and I initially bought it so I could give it to Elvira for Christmas, but then I ended up selling it in my whatnot stream. <laughs> Don't worry, girl. Elvira, if you're watching this, you know what I got you for your birthday now. How have you been otherwise? Boo, it's been, it's been crazy. <laughs> You know, I feel like people might think it's awkward to negotiate with a friend when you're doing doll business together, but it, it's really just like sisterhood of the traveling doll pants because you can just trade off with each other if you're tired of the doll. And we agreed on an agreeable rate because we're just agreeable people. I will situate this later. I'm so tired. <laughs> Somewhere in this pit sleep. <laughs> I literally woke up maybe 10 minutes before you, <laughs> before I texted you. I feel like even though I was tired from like all the emotional burnout, being around friends is always a good time. So it's never hard to stay awake around besties. The trailer that had already dropped like two weeks before. Right, I saw that they also posted something today about it too. I kind of wanted to do the like a retaliation, like you guys can keep your McDonald's buckets. I got these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm on my way to Frankenstein's because I heard they have the new Gen 3 Monster High Creepover dolls. Oh. Okay. So I will 
grab. I found Gentry Sleepover. Such a cute line. I feel like this is probably one of the best Gentry lines. It's ultimate Secrets, definitely top tier now that we've seen those. But finding Creepover, Frankenstein's come through. I will say though, I have been feeling a little bit iffy about Frankenstein's. And no, it's not because of that one guy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel like Frankenstein's has been really going up with their prices, like in obscene ways. More expensive than eBay. And what I love most about Frankenstein's is that they weren't as expensive as online. Because I know about the Whatnot stream, I wanted to make sure I had a ton of dolls available to give away to those of you who may not be able to afford things in the stream. I really wanted to make sure the Whatnot stream was accessible to everyone as possible. And I knew Holiday Draculaura was really rare at this time. So I snatched one up for you. And are you nervous for your whatnot stream? <sighs> I've never done a live auction and there's a couple things I'm nervous about. The doll community is known for trolling. And what can I say? I am a troll. I, I've definitely trolled some things in the in the doll community. So I spent the last five hours figuring out AI to edit this video. Oh no, it would be a shame if someone told everyone Claudine is a lesbian. Well, I think I'm most nervous about somebody joining the stream and then placing fake vids because I don't know how that's gonna run, but I trust my whatnot fam to get it taken care of. Now we are finally doing the Whatnot auction. Now Whatnot is a live stream auction platform and I really got into it because I saw Elvira was doing them. Oh my God, I'm already late. Okay. Someone says it's okay everyone, the dolls aren't going anywhere. <laughs> Whatnot is trying to scale their doll community on the platform and they asked me if I had any dolls available to sell. And I decided that in order for me to actually afford owning every single Monster High doll in box, I have to let go of some of the out of box ones. So I am actually going to be doing my biggest Monster High collection on Saturday, May 6th, 2023. I'll be auctioning off the last of my out of box dolls, a few in box dolls, Pennywise may or may not make another appearance. I have Comic Con clothes for sale. I have Skelector giveaways like Haunt Couture and Elvira. I have extra PR boxes that I'll be offering, which were never for sale. This will be one of your only opportunities to ever get these Monster High keepsake items. It'll be a good time and a gag. So make sure to click the link in the description to sign up and get a $15 credit when you use my link. I'll see you there Saturday, May 6th at 1.30 p.m. PST. Ah! Hi! I cannot believe we're finally starting this live stream. Oh, the comments are going off. The comments are going by way too fast for me to be able to see what's going on. But let's just get into it. I was shocked by the turnout on whatnot. All of you really showed up. And so I really wanted to make sure to show up for all of you. I know that for a lot of people, um, they weren't able to get her. If you're international, I know that it's a hard time getting dolls overseas. So just to preface this whole live stream, it will be international. I am very passionate about making sure that doll collectors internationally are able to get the doll. Making sure the Whatnot streams were available internationally was very important to me. I know a lot of y'all in the Claw Community cult are international. So I get messages from people in Germany, people in Honduras, people in Brazil. One of my beasties, Mookie Tunes, lives in Spain. So making sure that the people that I care about are able to have access to Monster High is super important. And the number one complaint I get from the doll community is that the dolls aren't available in their country. So knowing that Whatnot makes these sales available internationally was very important. Clarify, for a giveaway, I pay for the shipping. So I wanted to make sure the giveaway was completely free. I will be making sure to pay for the shipping. I saw someone say, I'm sorry you're having to sell your collection. So to clarify, I am only selling the dolls that are out of box. So I'm selling all of my out of box dolls. I'll probably keep like 10 of them, like the ones that are really sentimental to me. I'm more of an inbox collector now. Everyone was asking like, why are you selling your out of box dolls? You're gonna regret this. Honestly, I'd rather the out-of-box dolls go to somebody who's going to take care of them. I will have super impulsive creative decisions where I will take a doll and just cut up its dress or like need to repaint it or like fix its hair and I end up ruining the doll. So I just decided it's safer for me to keep the dolls in box. I feel like Monster High is the type of doll line where the box is a huge part of the storytelling that the designers created, especially because Garrett Sander, who is one of the OG creators of Monster High, was a packaging designer and I feel like that really shows in a lot of the packaging of the Monster High designs. Let's do Viperine because I saw that she was on Monster High's page recently as Enid. I would say she's in pretty good condition. She has all of her limbs. Oh my gosh, y'all, congrats S Felix1 
on your Viperine. I wanted to do new dolls for people who wanted to customize doll. Next is gonna be the Skull Shores Laguna. Now she is missing arms and her fins. This is literally just for customization. This is too much. <laughs> this is too much, y'all. It was still very jarring that people bought things just because it came from my collection. Like people wanted to know which video I used them in. There were people who were like, I bought this just because I remember you using it in Mega Monster Problems. The best part about doing live streams on whatnot is being able to interact with you. Congrats, E. Manon Sullivan. If I mispronounce your name, please let me know. And give you guys backstories on the dolls because on other platforms, I can't really share that information in a way that's so intimate and real time. Whatnot is the only way for me to sell. So here is picture day, Abby. She does have the brass knuckle. I loved when Monster High did rings and brass knuckles. Living Dead Louisa. Ooh, I love your name. Congrats on picture day, Abby. I was so overwhelmed by how active everyone was in the chat. I think this is probably the most comments I've gotten on a live stream ever. This whatnot stream, like y'all were chatting nonstop. I felt really like a celebrity. I am giving y'all a minute to buy the Target Monster High store display. Now, Selling this display was a lot. This is not the one that I ruined in the rain. I actually got a second one on eBay for $100 back in 2017, and I opened that one too, so that way I could display the original dolls in it. It is cracked on the side, so please be aware that it is cracked. But because it's cracked, I wanted to give the opportunity for one of you to own this display because... Where else are you gonna get the opportunity to get it? I feel so lucky that I even got so many opportunities. <laughs> oh. I can't believe I'm selling this. I believe it still works. You just can put batteries in the back. Oh my god. I'm I'm shaking. Like this is this is anxiety inducing. Are y'all nervous? I'm nervous. And congratulations, Rainy323, on your Monster High store display. I hope you cherish it forever. Selling off the rare dolls, honestly, it was easier for me to let go of than people may have thought. And it is going to be Dawn of the Dance, Cleo Denial, all the way back from 2010. It was hard in the sense that I knew I could have sold these dolls for a lot more, but I grew up in poverty. Like, I grew up to two disabled parents and a fixed income home. My idea going into whatnot is they wanted me to do giveaways, but I thought something that was really fun when I saw people on Facebook groups was when doll collectors would go thrifting and would find really rare dolls in thrift stores for like a dollar. And that's the feeling I wanted to give people. It's one thing to win a doll, but it's another to win a doll when you find it in a thrift store. For 10 doulas, we got this duel. So this will be $5. This doll was a Comic-Con doll. Congratulations. Spooks on Mina Divina. Congratulations. And so I wanted to sell the Comic-Con dolls and the really rare dolls for like $5. So it gave you that same feeling of, oh my God, I bought this doll. So you kind of earned it, but for such a low price that it's like winning it. The last item is the Comic-Con Coolia. Now, this was a last minute decision. I'm really contemplating the price on this one because this doll, to be honest, I've been holding on to her because I'm like, if I ever have to pay like a medical bill, if I have to pay rent, this doll can get me some coin tucks. No, this doll is worth $900, six to $900. I am not gonna sell her for that much. I think that's ridiculous. That is wild. I don't wanna do auction because I don't want this doll to sell for $100. This doll, I want somebody who would never be able to get her to get her. So I know this is a lot, but like if you're able to afford expensive dolls, give this to somebody who's not able to. Let somebody who would not have the chance to get this doll be able to get it. Each of you, if you signed up with my link, we're given a $15 credit. So I will be selling this doll for $15. I was not sure if I was gonna actually sell Comic Con Golia for $15, but so many of you showed up on this live stream and so many of you were willing to place bids that allowed me to sell Comic Con Golia for $15. In three, two, one, and she's listed for $15. Being able to make someone's day meant everything to me. Taja, congratulations on your Comic-Con Gulia. The winner shared a DM with me, like a photo of their collection. That was everything, like that was worth a doll. And I still have an extra one. I know I'm in a position where I've worked so hard to get where I am, where I'm able to have two of those Gulias. And why not share that? I don't know why not, tell me. Because <laughs> people are selfish and greedy.
Ultimately, the stream was probably one of my favorite things I've ever done in my career. Again, you guys just really turned out and that was super validating. It really made me feel like, wow, I really did create a platform here with you guys and I made enough money that now I can go ahead and try to finish my collection. I wasn't signing any of that or recording it. <laughs> You're lying. No. I did a second secret whatnot stream with Elvira in Florida really quickly. Oh, look how good that looks. Oh, we're doing it all over again. Oh. It's like a beauty mark. And the packaging for that whatnot stream was so chaotic because I was only in Florida for a quick minute. Take one. I'm gonna send you the next This clip, clip is directed by Robin. The packaging for whatnot definitely takes a couple hours. And you'd say that's about a pound, right? That's not that heavy. Yeah, it's not like a Thank God Elvira was there to help because she had all the shipping supplies ready for me to use and she came a clutch. And these secrets Barbie. So these three, one, two. So I got some huge packages in the mail and they are all the way from New Jersey. Oh, maybe I should do a TikTok first. Right, I'm gonna do a TikTok. I feel like people don't know how stressful filming a TikTok can be. Now, I know that sounds dramatic because everybody who films on the internet is like, uh, it's so much harder than you think it is. But I am not really good with choreography. I'm not good with lip syncing or memorizing things. I'm Whenever I'm out with V filming, she doesn't ever tell me this, but I know it's my fault that we're taking forever to film. I do not remember things for shit. The trauma really got the memory good gal. I just got the biggest Monster High package ever. This is my holy grail. Out of every Monster High doll that I own, this is the one thing that I cannot believe I finally own. This is a package that I really wanted for my entire childhood. I never thought I'd be able to get this, but when I tell you I had it saved on my eBay search and I would search every day religiously. To this day, even after getting these packages, I still continue to search on eBay just because it's like ingrained in my mind to do so. Hello, Bobies. Um, so I have two giant packages who I need to give a huge shout out to Mommy's World Rocks, AKA Melissa. Y'all know Melissa, the ghoul, the gal, the mommy. <laughs> Melissa is mother. Mother is mothering, AKA my world, mommy's world of rock. Dedication and friendship. <laughs> I first met Melissa when I was 13 or 14 and she's really been a consistent family member in my life. For sending this over, hopefully my address is not in it. Hi, Cassandra. If I missed your name, I'm so sorry, but please make sure to let me know your thoughts while I'm opening this. The Claw Community Cult is very special to me. I really formed it over the pandemic. The beginning of 2021, my other, other, other ex had moved out of my apartment. He just up and left, but you know, we're, we're fine now, we're cool. And I was really going through a lot at that time, but I consistently did Instagram live streams. I cannot believe I have this. Thank you so much, Tony, for getting a badge. Because Instagram started implementing badges, which is basically tips, we formed a group called the Community Cult. And that was basically consistent members who would buy badges to support me on the streams. And we really became friends. I am friends with a ton of people who join those live streams and we message every day. Look at the artwork Actiaze drew of me. I'm so lucky I get to look at this all the time. Um, how narcissistic, but it is the first thing that everybody compliments when they walk into my apartment. I feel like the community cult really is a family Hi. and we're Hi. able Hi. to Hi. just have this safe Hi. space Hi. where Hi. we talk about Hi. dolls and mental illness. Hi, other Tony, LJ plays. <laughs> this, I cannot believe I own this. It is literally the height of me. Oh my god, my table. I don't know if y'all can see this. It's like to my chest, so it's really big. This is a really big item. Nate, hello. Hola. I actually have two things. So this is only one of them. There are two things that I will be opening. Hey, Cameron. I'm sure this was really hard to ship. This took a minute to figure out how we were gonna get it here. <gasps> dolls and Lizards, hello. Also, okay, that's another person to think. Thank you, Dolls and Lizards, for making this happen too. This would not have happened without Dolls and Lizards. So shout out to um, my bestie, 
who sold this to me. I've been friends with dolls and lizards for so many years, since I was a kid, basically. He messaged me and let me know that this item that he knew I was looking for forever was available on Facebook Marketplace. All right, I'm just gonna start opening it because I know y'all are probably like, girl, just open up the box. I'm scared. It says this side up though. Oh my God, y'all. So I went on Facebook Marketplace, messaged my now friend, his name is John, on Facebook about this item. And John actually followed me and shared his Instagram. It is Nip Tuck Johnny, if you would also like to give him a follow. I was so quick to pay for it. It was not cheap. I was like, I will send you the payment right now, like ASAP. Please do not let anybody else buy this. This is an irreplaceable item. Like this is not something um, I will probably ever be able to get again. I just know something's gonna go wrong. I, I feel like good things cannot happen to me in full. Something has to go wrong, right? I'm gonna scream. I hope, I hope this is okay. I'm also scared it's not intact. I'm scared that it's broken. It was giving me an anxiety attack, especially because I was on a live stream, so I had to pretend like everything was cool. Let me see some of the comments. Um, not the kitchen knife. Uh, that's what I always used to open my boxes. I have no choice. This package was 55 pounds. Was it heavy? Yes. That package definitely weighed more than me. Because I weigh a good like 30 pounds, but that package was a good 50. Was Very fun. heavy carrying it up the so hill. So y'all carried it up the hill? Y'all didn't take the car? It's taking it up the hill. Why didn't y'all bring the car? Because we're psychos and we wanted to work out. <laughs> it's so hard to get it in the shot. Mm. This is Cleo's crypt. Ah, uh, yes, yes, LJ plays. I was thinking Cleo's mummified tomb. Oh my god, I literally cannot believe right now that I own this. It was so surreal to actually unbox this. Like, as I was cutting it, I felt like I couldn't really focus because I wanted to do a live stream and like talk with y'all and the community cult about getting this really special package. I tend to not process things until like three or four days after they happen, but as I was opening it, I still knew how important and special this was for me. When I was looking for the original Claudine, every store was sold out of her. And Target had the Claudine in the store display. My mom talked with the workers and was like, don't you want to make a little boy's dream today and sell him this doll, trying to get them to get me the doll out of the display? Obviously they didn't do it. But ever since then, I've always wanted that specific display to display my original Monster High dolls because it matched the webisodes. In some ways, I kind of made my childhood dreams come true and I've done a lot of things, but having this specific item just feels very, very surreal. So to own this whole display right now is so surreal. It looks like somebody tried to get into it a little bit. Oh my God. I don't know if there's a way to adjust the ones that are crooked, but whatever. I feel like I'm not alive. This feels like not real. This feels like it's not real life. Look at these, looking up at, at <laughs> the sky. I cannot believe, right Nina? I never ever thought I would um, own this and I am not fucking around when I say every single day, every single day, I have gone on eBay and looked up Monster High Display, looked up recently listed items. This is my grail item. So everyone's been asking me how much these displays costed me. And John was super reasonable. I did not negotiate. I felt like these were already fair prices. Low key, I was like, are you sure you want to sell it for this price? I got both store displays for $900. If I get the one with Casta, I will have every store display, which technically I had. And then I was an idiot child and opened. There was a time when I tried to get one of the store displays from my own Target in Florida when I was like 13. It was me and my mom and we brought it to the cat. Joanne is crazy now that I think about it. She's down to do anything. She's down to get dirty. So we put it in her scooter because she rode the like the little electric scooters and we brought it to the checkout and one of the store managers came over and they were like, you cannot buy that. That's copywritten. That's what she said. And I was like, copywritten? Like that doesn't even make no sense. But she said that they cannot be sold because they're property of Mattel. So technically, these are not items that anybody should be owning and Mattel if you're watching this I don't even actually own that if I can get in trouble for it. This is all this is all hypothetical and for entertainment purposes only <laughs> Most people don't own this display. So there's not a lot of information on how it works 
So now we found out that you can open it up from the back to fix the dolls and change the battery pack. I don't know why, and this probably is not great to say, but I feel like, like an evil villain who's just acquired what I need <laughs> to take over the world. Two displays down, one to go. These are like the Monster High Infinity Stones. So once I get the third one, it's over for y'all. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. I'm nervous. I'm not asking you. If you've watched my videos since the beginning, you've probably seen Sasha. <laughs> Sasha is my niece. She basically is a little sister to me, and for a long time growing up, she would try to say she was my sister, and I'd be like, no, I am your uncle. But now I'm her. Her clots? <laughs> that sounds, that sounds right. bad. <laughs> it sounds right. How many locks does she have? <laughs> she's only a couple years younger than me, so I do Sasha? feel like she's my little sister, and I'm super protective of her. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! Hi. Hey! Going home to Florida is never easy, but it was especially hard because my dad had passed, and this is my first time going to my childhood home now that my dad's gone. It was. I told myself I wasn't gonna cry. No, boy, don't tell me, no nothing. No, we just wanted to surprise you. Well, you sure did. Let me close this. Later. How are you? I feel so short. I hadn't seen my mom in a minute, and I feel like in that way, like, I know I'm coming home to family, and that's really, really important. Okay. Well, now we can see what Monster High dolls I have in here. You have a thousands of stuff. My mom did call me earlier in the year asking if I could help her go through some of dad's things. I also knew that I had dolls that I had to go through and like so much stuff at her place that is just taking up space and now it's her home fully and she's a grown woman. Not that it's anybody's business but she is in a relationship. So you know she needed the space and it was a it was a journey. Everybody grieves in different ways and this is my first time I've really experienced this type of grief. I believe that we experience grief when we lose dreams or relationships or jobs but death is like a different type of grief. My brain cannot handle all this. I feel very, very lucky that I had Sasha with me because that just made it, it made it feel like, I don't know, like I was just a kid again and we were just having a good time. Oh, this is you. Sasha. Another maid. Any brown girl. But her name is <laughs> Sasha. <laughs> I know. Um, I was, I was found, or what do you, have, what did it discover? A lady and her two daughters were coming down the aisle. Yeah. And they walked past me and the girl turned around and she went, um, my mom wants to know, are you the lady from the YouTube videos? I said, yes. And then they got all like bananas. It was so crazy. Joey, I would be nothing without me. That's first. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do. I'm like, okay. Oh, you look, you just look like your videos. I said, not really. And they said, well, you do. I'm like, okay. What do you mean you don't? You got a lot, a lot of packages. I see that. Now this is crazy, it's too packed. Are the boxes damaged? But this was high priority. Right. Mm. Oh my god, the box is severely damaged. Wait, did you get it on sale? No. Mm. That is A little, so the whole rude. thing's down. Maybe it'll pop back out when you're done. A Birkin, another Birkin. <laughs> People got mad at me for my TikTok with that. They were like, oh my god, at this point he's just trying to flex all his stuff. I was literally trying to promote the new doll. Oh my gosh, you know what's so funny? It's like one time when I was on. Um... Not you completely ignored what I said. <laughs> anyway, what, what were you saying? What, what did you compare the two? You, you compared two Frankies, right? Yes. Oh, so you did see it. Yeah, I just said I liked it. <sighs> Give me the <laughs> LOMG voice right now. <laughs> so one time, like, when I was on your least favorite social media platform Twit? Yes. Make sure you don't show that side. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, I think I actually was like a diva like that. <laughs> so when I was on. Twitterbug. I hate Twitter. I hate Twitter. <laughs> Is that a nickname for it? <laughs> Twitterbug. <laughs> Is that a nickname for it? Nobody gets me to open up and really have a good time like Sasha can. She's always there for me, and whenever I need to film something, she's always willing to be the dummy for it. I used to hot glue outfits onto her, and I wanted to do Monster High looks, but we ended up on the Monster High Facebook page several times because of it. So, I saw a post of us on there. Like literally the picture and everything. Like, us? like the picture and everything. Like that you posted because you posted a picture. 
And it, it was up because I really wanted to be John as Big Mouth character, so you posted it on your <laughs> you posted it on your story, and then this person reposted it. And it was like, how dare Claudina ask to be drawn for free as Big Mouth characters and her niece <laughs> as Big Mouth characters for free? And I was like. First of all, nowhere on that post did I say it was for free. Nowhere was it asked for free. I was looking for artists who could draw in that style. Literally, not everything is that deep. Like... For real! Like, y'all are too much. Oh, you want this one? Oh, that squirt. That's enough of me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Something that people don't know if they didn't grow up with somebody disabled or are disabled themselves is the way that it affects the smallest of things. Matt! Matt, can you bring me my walker and a tissue? My eye is really dripping. It's like going to the grocery store takes an extra hour because we have this lift on the back of my mom's car. So we have to take down the lift and then put the wheelchair in and make sure that we fit the wheelchair in, in the right way so that way we can still put groceries in the car. People who aren't exposed to that lifestyle don't know yeah, how difficult it can really be, especially if you're living on your own. Everybody who has KTS, it affects them differently. But for my mom, it looks like having to be my mom's caretaker sometimes. Not all the time, some days are better than others. But there are times where she can't get out of bed or like she needs me to bring her her walker and then make dinner for her. I'll be right back. So after my dad passed, I stayed with my mom for a couple months, but ultimately she wanted her own space. She's a, she's a strong little lady. I think my parents did the best with what they could and they were older and I love them for it. I'm so grateful. I would not be who I am without them. They were still my mom and dad, but I think that I definitely lacked the sense of structure that I think a lot of kids get. First of all, not it literally raining. It's a dual. You wanna open it with me? Huh? You yes. I literally can't hold my head. Do you need potassium? No. I recently posted a TikTok with my mom where I did her makeup and I asked her why she let me collect dolls, which is a question I never thought of asking her. She's always been super supportive of it. I'll let you open it. I already know what it is. You do? Mm-hmm. Let's see if you can figure out how to open it. That's what I thought at first too, but that's not how you open it. Now, I feel like people who are watching this video probably already accept the idea of boys wanting dolls. I was always trying to prove a point in my own life, not because of my parents, but because teachers and some of my siblings had things to say and friends eventually did have things to say. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. I have no idea. I'm a little shaky. You're getting there, yeah. This is, this is kind of how I try to break it down for people. You can't control what types of food you do and don't like. So people can't control what preferences they have to the types of toys they like or what shows they like or what they enjoy. If everyone could just love scary movies, I'm sure everyone would just be going to see Scream. But bitch, I don't want to see that, so. <laughs> like don't hold the bottom. Yeah. Now I'll help you. So you don't have to suffer. Okay, okay. Ready? Go. Ready? <laughs> oh my god, okay, wait. It's like a coffin, right? <laughs> mm hmm Oh, wow. She's beautiful. And when you are telling your child there's something wrong with them for an interest they can't control, it often develops in social anxiety, it develops in feeling the need to be extra performative, it ends up with a lot of having to compartmentalize parts of your personality. Most people who want to get dolls are gonna find a way to get dolls, they're just not gonna tell you. It, it's really up to you, do you want to be on speaking terms and have a communicative relationship with somebody that you care about? Cleo Denial, the character. I remember her, yeah. Or do you not want to be on speaking terms and for these things to just continue to happen without your knowledge? Look at that shit, wow. She's blinged out. She looks gorgeous. I met the designer at Comic-Con. She was really, 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 really nice. Yeah, she was really nice. She's very talented. Mm-hmm. She's been working with them since the beginning. I wanted to prove that, look at what I can do as a doll collector. From? From Mattel. And they said, well, it's loading. I created an empire by liking dolls. Not that you should have to have financial gain for your hobby to be accepted, but I do think there is that aspect that allows you to communicate with loved ones why doll collecting is important to you. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. 
So I'm very excited for that. Uh, very excited. It's amazing. <laughs> My package from Katie just arrived from Germany. Katie is an iconic drag queen and she reached out to me because she also knew I was completing my Monster High collection and told me that she had the Great Scary Reef collection available and I was missing a couple dolls. I did have a couple dolls in the collection, but I was like, wait, this is an opportunity for me to have international packaging. So I said yes and lo and behold, the package arrived from Germany. Growing up, I feel like people didn't, didn't take my friendship seriously because a lot of them were online, but how cool is it that I get to connect with so many of you who are in countries away across the entire globe knowing that katie is nowhere near proximity to me but we get to be so close or be able to damn each other and connect is really really cool as somebody with social anxiety social media has definitely helped me make friends it's also been a bit of a hindrance because i feel like it's been a way for me to not push myself in social settings in person most of my friendships that i have now started online like i've mentioned in part one like elvira meeting her online or friendships that i wouldn't be able to have otherwise like Mookie tunes in Spain. But it's international packaging. <laughs> Even though we grew up on a fixed income, my parents always made sure that our Christmas tree was full and that we had all the things that we wanted. We didn't go um, without a, a really fun Christmas. Because I'm the baby, I'm the youngest of six, Christmases were always pretty lit. That's cute. What does it say? From Luz? Who? I just see Mama. Yeah. But from, what is the numbers? It says to my Claudina. Oh. Right. But what's the, the second thing? It says from. I know it says from, but <laughs> after from, it says. Mama. Yeah, but what's that? Love. L -O -V. Oh, it's a V. I thought it was L O O Z. <laughs> no, L O O V. Put your glasses on. Showing emotion on camera is difficult for me because there there's a level of wanting to remain authentic and having a level of integrity that I cling to. And I think for some reason, I feel like sharing things on camera where anybody can see it rips away the authenticity. I would much rather cry in person with someone than record it on camera. Now with that being said, I definitely had videos of me crying <laughs> or being super emotional, but it's very rare, I think, in comparison to the amount of times that I'll cry. Sharing really intimate moments and memories like I am with my mom on camera makes me clam up a little bit, but the whole point of this documentary was to share what is it like to be a doll collector or how do you complete your Monster High collection and trying to normalize that for people. I'm 23 years old. What I'm doing is still absurd. I still find it absurd. I'm very proud of myself. So I wanted to share these intimate moments with you all in the best way I could. It was really special getting to open Monster High dolls from my mom. Funny enough, I think this is, this is probably the only Monster High doll my mom ever got me for Christmas. Not because of anything malicious, but because I've always bought my Monster High dolls myself. There's probably times that she got me things, but not on Christmas. So there was something really special about getting to complete my collection because of this set that she got me. And, and I feel like it was a testament to how much she supports my endeavors and sees how much this means to me. I hope you enjoy them. And are you gonna keep them in the box or out of the box? No, I keep them all in box. All oh. my, I, on a good day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh my god, there's 200 people and the stream hasn't even started. This is my second official Monster High Whatnot stream and I was nervous because the first one went so well that it was like, is the cake gonna turn out as good the second time? Oh my ghoul, there is so many of y'all. How is everyone's day going? We're just gonna kick it off. I'm gonna start with a giveaway. I love starting all my streams off with a giveaway. Obviously, I am Monster High obsessed, so I know the most obscure things, but getting to talk about it with you all one-on-one on, one on whatnot was super fun. The and then there were some of you who were sharing facts with me that I didn't even know. Video. I don't know how I ended up with two of her, but I did. And I got her in a lot with the Dracula. She was exclusive to Kohl's and Fifth, I 
gifts. If you are a true Clumity cult member and you want a signature, then you can request them on the Whatnot streams. But I have made it a point that every single order I have ever shipped out includes a handwritten note. It is really intimate that I get to speak with you all one-on-one -on, -one on these streams and that I get to share my collection with you. And these dolls have meant so much to me that I want to give backstory and appreciation with every order. I hand wrap every single order in special tissue paper. Like I order specific looking tissue paper to wrap them in. We write the notes. I sign things if people want autographs. I've signed the back of dolls. I've signed faces. I've done artwork. Now the artwork is always really fun. To go from a little kid that felt so alone and so um, weird to people requesting my signature, very, very special to me. Like I love y'all for that. The hair, the inches, the inches on the hair. That is just wait until it's down. If you do win her and you take it down, the hair is so long. I love y'all. Uh, enough that it takes me like 12 hours to package these orders. I would say on average, it probably takes five to six hours to package orders because I have to package them all individually and I'm making sure that none of the orders are duplicated or there's any mistakes and dolls are going to the wrong houses. I also bubble wrap and wrap every doll individually like I mentioned. So it takes some time. There's a lot of care going into packaging for whatnot. As a business owner, I take appreciating my customers very seriously, but because I also know y'all are part of my fandom, I want to make sure that everyone feels like this order is coming from somebody who takes their business seriously. Tell me how everyone was saying that Valentine looked like Shane Dawson in the stream. Um, <laughs> Now, I'm not gonna lie, y'all are definitely the reason I have money in my bank account. Like the whatnot streams y'all turn out. I love y'all so much for that because y'all are the reason I'm able to complete my collection. So the stream went really well. I'm an entrepreneurial queen. And I did mention in part one that I dropped out of school. So if you don't know, I dropped out of freshman year of high school because I did YouTube. And I guess my parents allowed me to do it because they were older and both disabled and they didn't feel like fighting me on it. But I was also financially successful because of you guys on YouTube. I mean, I joke that I went to Monster High because that's where I learned all of my skills. I learned my social skills by becoming friends with fans in the community. I learned how to do photography through all my doll photography. I learned video editing with all my doll videos and stop motions. I learned business because I was emailing Mattel at 11. Now, granted, those emails were definitely, uh, embarrassing and I hope that Mattel doesn't have them archived but I learned everything that I know because I was such a huge fan of this franchise and I was so passionate about it that it allowed me to be creative in ways that I just wouldn't have in school. I gave all my special I think that's the lyrics. So people on Twitter bug, as Sasha said, shared that the third Monster High display I was missing was found on Facebook Marketplace. So there's somebody on Facebook Marketplace who had this, but they would not ship it to me. Now they specifically shared it on Twitter so that way I couldldn't get it. How messy. But BC Dracuholic came through and sent me a DM. Here's the link to this display. And I would not have gotten that display without Dracuholic. So thank you so much for sending me the link to that. Funny story. The person who sold it to me told me that they got it. They owned like an apartment complex. A tenant of theirs paid their rent with the display. And I only know this story because my friend Tony picked it up for me because without Tony, I wouldn't have been able to actually get this display. It was $500. It was $500 because I know y'all are gonna ask. You know what, since it's so well padded, it, this should be fine. If it breaks, that's on me. Y'all caught me slipping. Tony, AKA Violet Lotus, is one of my best friends. She is one of the smartest people I know and just such a critical thinker. Okay. I got asthma, y'all. I have asthma. <laughs> Let me see what this video looks like. I have never used this kind of protection. Wait, I got extras! Open me. <laughs> I think I will. I am a little scared to cut this open, but... Oh, cute! It is a Dawn of the Dance puzzle. The iconic Dawn of the Dance silly face art as a puzzle. It is, in fact, a hundred piece puzzle. Y'all ever just open up packages and realize like, wow. I have become everything I wish I was. Y'all already know what this means. I have all three Monster High Infinity Stones. That means it's over for all of you. No, I'm just kidding. Specifically the ones on Twitter who didn't want you to have this play. <laughs> I have collected every Monster High Infinity Stone. It is the 
last Monster High store display. The lesson we learned is you can come for the queen, but don't miss because you only get one shot <laughs> and I won. There's one thing I'm gonna do, it is get what I want. It is get what I want. You know, I'm a go-getter. Thank you, Tony and Dracuholic for making this happen. This is the first store display that I ever got back in 2014. I don't know if I can tell this story time, but it was with my dad <laughs> and my dad did not know what was going on. The third display is actually really special because obviously if you watch part two, you know my dad died, you know, out with the old. <laughs> um, because I knew you could not actually buy the real display, what I did was I was sneaky as a kid. I printed out a UPC code for the Monster High Skull Shores five pack and I took an Elmer's glue stick and I glued it onto the back of the store display. My dad had no idea what was going on. He's come again, he's completely clueless. Like he had no idea. Went to the checkout and I remember the store worker was a seasonal employee and he was like, oh, they're letting you buy that display. That's so cool. And I was like, ha, ha, yeah. Then my dad brought it out with me and we got into a car accident in the parking lot. And I was like, fuck, like we are not supposed to have this display. I'm about to go to jail. It wasn't my dad's fault and my dad just let the guy go. So we were fine. And that's how I got that store display until I left it out in the rain. Oh, it's, it's Liddy. Now we know this display works. It is light censored. If I'm not mistaken, there's like a little sensor. <laughs> this is crazy. Why do I still feel nothing inside? God is good all the time. <laughs> yeah. So I got home from Florida and I was exhausted because then I had to do that second stream. Even though the turnout was good and like there were good things, you know, grief is just not, not what you expect. So I was tired. I was ready to rest. As y'all may recognize, Ava is part of the industry and we became very close through that. We just became besties. Like we talk all the time now and she's definitely my go-to person when I have a story to tell. I knew when I was gonna be a little impulsive and messy, I called Ava. Hello. Hi, are you okay? I was tired. I wanna have a good time. So I, um, I had a couple sips of, of a little drink. I... I think I'm about to complete my whole Monster High collection. Okay, how many more do you have? Because I remember still when it was like 69. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, a, like a year ago. No, now I only need 22. So you've completed like two thirds, a little over two thirds of the 69. A little bit over the 69. I decided to go drunk shopping and I added every single doll I was missing to my cart to see how much it would be if I were to just say buy them all at once. What doll are you most excited to order? And the answer is I heard fashion Cleo. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says. I fucking did. So. Out of all these dolls, I am most excited to try and order I heart fashion Cleo, but I couldn't find her anywhere. I was like, how am I supposed to complete my collection or know how much it's gonna cost if I can't get this Cleo? Get it together. The thing is that like, I didn't technically complete it until I have them all in hand, but I'm tired of hunting. She, she, she has enough money to just buy it. I think I'm just gonna buy it. Okay, I must ask how many Cleos and how many Draculors are in the- Um, oh, I was gonna say I don't need any Draculors, but that's not true. I only you need... always need Draculors. You need duplicate. I was gonna say triplicates. That's not the word. <gasps> triplicates. I'm gonna start saying that. Triplet. Trio. Tri trio. You're messing with the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> it is 3 a.m. We need to stop. Well, I need to stop. Okay. Okay. Let me just tell you how many I'm missing. Okay. Um, I'm only missing one Cleo. Guess how much that doll is. Mm, Five hundred fifty. That was a good- how did you know? Cause I just know that like anytime a doll is like super expensive or rare, it's around that much. I am so like shook to the core that you knew that was the, it was, it was 500. That didn't stop me from ordering every single doll I was missing though. I can do it, anybody can do it. I am a grown man in a wig playing with dolls. But how do you do that? How did I go from rags to riches? I've been depressed before, but last year I was at the worst point of my life. So something pretty traumatic happened. Not to take a dark turn, 
but I need to be honest with you all because what's the point of doing this documentary if it's not fully vulnerable? It's no secret, I am mentally ill boots. I am sick. <laughs> I am sick. I am twisted. I'm diagnosed with PTSD and I've been very open about my struggles with self-harm. Last year, it was just too much. I didn't see any hope for my life. My dad had passed, my romantic relationships had been completely toxic, and then I had to deal with constant harassment and dehumanization every single day on the internet. And I just felt completely alone. I felt like I was a little kid getting bullied all over again, and I really didn't see the point in being alive anymore. I didn't actually want to die, but I just couldn't bear the pain. And so I did some things that led to paramedics rushing me to the hospital, and I was put in a mental hospital for a few days. I wanted to talk about how I'm really proud of myself for how I got through that. And it wasn't easy, I think, that it would be patronizing to pretend like getting through these things is really simple, but if you're going through something or you feel emotionally turbulent, I'm not gonna give you some trite cliche about how it's gonna get better because it doesn't always feel that way. I feel like it can genuinely feel like it's never gonna get better. Though I do wanna leave some resources for you down below in the description. They're not commonly shared resources. And I will just say for me, like my own personal experience, going to trauma-informed therapy was really, really helpful. And it's a unique form of therapy where the treatment is a little different than traditional therapy. That was a fit for me and how I was able to get through these struggles. If you feel like you're at a wit's end and you don't know what else to do, it's not for everyone and I can't promise that it's gonna be the answer for you, but it's definitely been a huge part of my own healing journey. Therapy is not accessible to everyone and I know that and it can be expensive, so I've left some entirely free resources down below. I have completely transformed my life and achieved one of my biggest goals that I've ever dreamed of since I was a kid. And I'm sure there's gonna be people out there who are like, you're a grown adult, like, why are you playing with toys living in the past? And bitch, what about it? Not them thinking it was trash! <laughs> Jen sent me. This is the Gulia with an arrow on the box and a little claw pin. I love you, next Jen. I don't think I want to display them like this. No. No, I'm gonna switch it up.
fire. Why do I look like that? I ordered every single doll I was missing, but I could not find that Cleo. I decided to go on Google and I searched I Heart Fashion Cleo. And on the images tab, there was one that said for sale. So I clicked on it and messaged the seller and I was like, hey, I'm not able to buy this from the US. Would you be willing to ship it to me? And they said, yes, if I'm a serious buyer. Now, obviously I'm a serious buyer. I've already spent so many thousands of dollars in Monster High dolls. And she's here. We have I Heart Fashion Cleo. Shout out to Jai Prish Goldick who plays Cleo, the one and only Cleo. Something that y'all might not know about this Cleo is that she was made in 2013, which is probably one of my favorite years of my life. Now there was a lot going on, but 13 Wishes came out, this Cleo came out, and she was a Toys R Us exclusive. And Garrett Sanders shared on his Instagram story that this doll is really rare because for whatever reason, Toys R Us just didn't order a lot of her. I did have this doll before, but I lost her through one of the floods or selling her or something. One of the floods. One of the many floods. <laughs> there, was, there was a couple floods. The most gratifying part of owning this doll is the principle and how I ended up getting it and all the hard work that went into achieving what I have. That means so much. And I feel like it's a testament to the fact that I'm a very dedicated person, that I was able to complete this collection. I'm consistent and I'm very passionate. And I feel like that's what owning this Cleo really means. It's not the fact that I spent $500 or the fact that she's a rare doll. It's the fact that there's a lot of meaning going into owning her. over it with the Ikea shelves. Everybody got the Ikea shelves. It was boring. I spent so much on these dolls. An iconic collection needs an iconic display. I thought, why not coffin shelves? But they're very hard to find. If you try looking them up, nowhere has them because of that little tidbit. I spent hours searching on the internet for what would be the best way to have these coffin shells made that will actually fit my dolls because that was another fear of mine how will i make sure that it's actually going to fit the dolls found an amazing seller on etsy raven shadow wood i was actually their first ever etsy order and they custom made 10 coffin shells in specific sizes just for me and specific colors it has to look like this it has to fit all my monster high doll and they worked really well with me and hand delivered all of them. I could only afford 10 shelves at the time, so there's a ton of dolls behind me that are not yet on shelves. I did an Instagram live and I let some of you help me decide which dolls to display. I really wanna connect with y'all. I feel like y'all are the ones who have to see the shelves aside from just me. So it might as well be dolls that everybody likes, but I displayed some of my favorite lines and the lines that mean the most to me. So 13 Wishes is there. We have I Heart Fashion. We have the Target exclusives. I have the complete Monster High doll collection in box. This is so surreal. Now, I will say there's some Monster High items that I still want to get, like Create a Monster, the plushies, which I have been slowly collecting, the vinyls. Expect a full collection tour by June. I have a couple little things that I ordered to display my dolls that just aren't ready to be revealed yet, but there will be a full tour by then, so be on the lookout for that. The dolls I've decided to display, are we, are we ready? I don't know if we were ready. <laughs> yep, just, we're good. I still have some open spaces where I haven't quite decided because I have a ton of dolls down here that are not put up yet. I decided to put all of the signature dolls out here with the placards that I had before. So it tells you what year they came out and um, what the name of the line is. So these are the core lines, so it just says wave. You like that edit of Nicki Minaj with the little <laughs> with the little <laughs> The little boy! So you think I look like a boy? No, I'm the Virgin Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us which ones are gay. <laughs> okay, yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> they are not gay. Those two aren't. I have every single Monster High doll. Where do we go from here? The end is only the beginning. <laughs>